LaSalle made local news and was also rewarded for its commitment to service. Hello, I'm Erin Holly. And I'm Nick Paleo. A major change to Philly's nickname has been implemented for 2020. We've all this and more coming up on LTV News, where the action never stops. Hello and welcome to LTV News, where we bring you everything from 20th and on the Avenue, Philadelphia, and the world. There is a lot to catch up on in the next half hour as producer Sam Long had the chance to sit down with the creator of the new hip hop and R&B club at LaSalle. So let's hear the buzz around campus. On Friday, February 5th, LaSalle hosted its annual Nursing and Health Sciences Career Fair. The event took place in Founders Hall and representatives from all over the Philadelphia area came out to speak to interested students. The students had the opportunity to speak to representatives at each of their respective tables. LaSalle's Career Center hosts on-campus job fairs for different majors often and employers can connect with students and recent grads who are seeking jobs internships or co-ops. The next job fair will be the annual spring job fair on April 2nd. On Wednesday, January 5th, LaSalle held an event focused on the topic of mental health. The event, titled Messages of Hope and Resilience, featured the stories of Melissa Rice, the author of the book The People You Meet in Real Life, and Jordan Burnham, Director of Student Engagement for the organization Minding Your Mind, as well as an accomplished speaker on mental health. Sponsored by LaSalle's Garrett Lee Smith Campus Suicide Prevention Grant and First Year Initiatives, the evening was held to break the stigma around mental health issues and inspire hope for those fighting these issues and finding recovery. On Saturday, February 8th, University Ministry Service and Support hosted the 17th annual Live Auction. The event held to raise money for the university's various alternative break service immersion programs featured a dinner, open bar, and plenty of baskets for guests to check out. In addition, the night featured a number of silent auction lots for individuals to place bids on. At the conclusion of the event, live participants served as auctioneers and held a quite lively live auction. Lots such as priority housing, VIP commencement tickets, and Harry Styles tickets were available for bid. A recent Philadelphia Inquirer article has demonstrated that a LaSalle degree is worth a lot more than some may think. The article reveals that LaSalle stands in the top 4% nationally in terms of tenure earnings after graduation. A study conducted by Georgetown University concludes that the biggest brand name schools, including those in the coveted Ivy League, are not always better. The data demonstrates that LaSalle, a small Catholic liberal arts university in Philadelphia, ranks above powerhouses such as Penn State when it comes to the earnings metric. Some other top Pennsylvania colleges for lifetime earnings include University of the Sciences, Lehigh University, UPenn, and Carnegie Mellon University. People in our world are asking, is a degree worth the money? In some cases, the answer is no. But at LaSalle, a degree is affordable, and it will pay off in the long run. On January 31st, LaSalle was awarded the Carnegie Community Service Engagement Classification from the Carnegie Foundation for the Advancement of Teaching and the Howard R. Swearer Center at Brown University. This is the second time LaSalle has received this certification, having first been recognized in 2010. The Carnegie Community Engagement Classification is the highest standard of recognition for community engagement efforts and institutes of higher education. LaSalle is one of 243 institutions nationally to receive this important rec recognition, which is valid until 2026. President Colleen Hanich said in a statement, quote, we are humbled and honored to once again receive this prestigious classification from the Carnegie Foundation. The Carnegie Community Engagement Classification recognizes the culture of our university, where teaching, learning, service, and social justice are at the root of everything we do. For us, community engagement is central to our mission, and we live that mission each day." End quote. LaSalle's newest club offers discussion on culture of hip hop and an opportunity to learn more about its many forms. Sam got to find out more about this new club with Tyreek Mac Georges. Check it out. 
Hello. Today I'm sitting down with Tyreek Mac Georges, the president and founder of the new hip hop and R&B club at LaSalle. Tyreek, thank you for uh, sitting down with us today. No problem. I'm just going to ask you some questions about uh, the club. So, mm -hmm. what made you want to start this club? Um, so the inspiration behind the club kind of came from me kind of like having different conversations with different people on campus and like at home. Um, and usually they would be about like, you know, hip hop and R&B music and how it impacts us and impacts our lives and whatnot. So I was like, I think this would be like a really good club to have at LaSalle and I don't think we have anything like it yet. So um, I went to, you know, student activities, asked them if there was anything like this. And they were like, no, we could probably get this started. So that went underway last semester and, you know, we got it started this semester. So is the club all just talking about music or is there anything like, you know, people coming in, playing music, showing mm -hmm. off their skills, their creativity? Yeah, um, the club mainly is discussion based. So usually what we do is uh, we have like a topic um, that I come in with that I'm ready to like address. And usually we'll present the topic and, you know, we'll talk about it. And usually that will like kind of divulge like into like a gigantic group conversation. Um, and, you know, everybody's respectful. We have turns, we speak uh, when, we, when, you know, it's time to speak. Uh, I'm looking forward to like, you know, if I get more members to have opportunities and spaces for more like people who are creative and want to make like music to be able to have a platform to share it on. So um, that's definitely welcome. It's just I haven't been able to implement that yet. So right now it's just pure discussion. Yeah, so for topics for your meetings, are they like diving into an artist's discography mm -hmm. or like the impact of a certain artist's music yeah. on your life? Um, yeah, so our first meeting kind of discussed that. We were, um, we went around and we asked everybody, you know, like your name, major, and you know, the typical icebreaker stuff. Yeah. Uh, but we also asked like the group question was basically, you know, what album or artist has impacted your life and why? And you know, everybody had a range of different answers. And, you know, after we had that conversation, we, you know, put it all together and just talked about these different artists. Now, can I yeah. ask what album or artist has impacted your life the most? Yeah, um, I would want to say uh, there's this album by uh, J. Cole um, called 2014 Forest Hills Drive um, that has really impacted me the most. I think that's the album that really got me into hip hop when I was a, a freshman in high school. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it kind of detailed a lot of stuff that you think about, you know, when you're growing up in like an urban society or context, but you know, a lot of music doesn't really talk about it. So like he talks a lot about in the um, album about like um, what it's like growing up in poverty versus, you know, how it looks like when you are successful and whether or not success is worth it, that kind of thing. Um, and it's just a lot of different stuff that I didn't know I needed to hear. Yeah, um, I remember when that album came out when I was in high school. We have yeah. a, we have vastly different music tastes, but right. I feel like something I should probably look into more, try to get a better cultural understanding. Yeah. So how many people do you have in the club so far? Um, we have about eight active members right now. Um, I have uh, a pretty good um, e-board. I'm missing a treasurer. That's really it. Um, I have a vice president and a secretary, um, and you know they've made mostly every meeting so far. Yeah. So I assume since you're looking for a treasure, that means you guys have some kind of budget. Is there any kind of like bigger activities the um, club is going to be looking to so do? So we're looking forward to like, you know, basic club stuff like apparel, hopefully yeah. that kind of thing. Um, student apparel, uh, maybe if possible, maybe we can, you know, raise funds for recording stuff. Maybe if people want to like, like I said, have that space to make music, we can put money toward that. Or maybe if, you know, we're all interested in an artist and we might want to go like see a concert or something like yeah. that, you know, um, lots of different things. Um, so I think that's why it's like not the most, like it's not what I'm worried the most about. And, you know, I'm fine not having a treasurer right now because it's okay if we're not able to do any of those things yeah, right now. But yeah, but a lot, a, down the line, if we are open to doing those kinds of things, then having a treasurer would be pretty good for that. Yeah. Now, I was talking to you earlier, and you said mm -hmm. uh, you started looking at making this club last semester. Was yeah. the process hard for you to get a club established? Um, it was, uh, I want to say it was hard, but, like, not hard in the sense that it's hard to put together. It's just, like, um, hard in the fact that, you know, as a student, you already have, like, your own stuff going on. And then, like, you have to present your constitution and get it 
fixed and drafts. Like I remember I had about like, I want to say five or six drafts back to back until like it was finally finalized. Yeah. And um, yeah, like, I mean, the process itself was long, but I wouldn't say it was hard. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for sitting down with no us. No problem. I uh, hope you guys get some new members. Yeah. I'm going to send it back over to the desk. So, Nick, don't you think this new R&B and hip-hop club is so cool? Yeah, it's, I don't know how many schools can say they have this sort of club. Yeah. And I think that what's great about LaSalle is if you have an interest like hip-hop and R&B, and if you don't see a club and you mm -hmm. want to create one, there are ways for you to create a club. And this is the perfect example of someone who had an idea, mm -hmm. had some friends who also had that interest to kind of put that club together. Yeah, it's so um, unique. Yeah, I know. Are you into hip-hop and R&B? Like, what's your, um, type, what's your favorite type of music? Personally, no, not hip hop and R and B. I'm more of a country music oh, kind of girl. Oh my goodness! Country oh, music is country. great, Nick. Such a de so divisive. What do you like? Smooth jazz. <laughs> yeah, who else loves country music on the station? Sean. Sean Kelly. Sean, Sean loves Sean Kelly. country music. You and him, do you bond over your love of country yes, music? Yes, we actually play it in the back when we're getting ready for the show. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, it is time for our first break. Uh, maybe we'll play some country music. But coming up, one of the city's most popular food sites is preparing for a major celebration. Stay with us. Exposure to blue light can mess with your sleep and memory cycle, so make sure you limit your screen time at least two hours before you go to bed. When you miss an episode of Q&A, You get hungry. When you get hungry, you don't know what to eat. When you don't know what to eat, you get irritable. When you get irritable, you miss questions on your exam. Don't miss questions on your exam. Watch Q&A on LaSalle TV. Philadelphia is honoring the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment, which recognized women's right to vote by making an honorary change to its famous nickname. The city of brotherly love will be known as the Cis city of sisterly love for all of 2020. The change is part of a joint effort with Visit Philadelphia, who plans to celebrate sisterly love all year long. Mayor Jim Kenney commended the ceremonial change by saying, quote, women are the backbone of our families, our communities, and our society. The ceremonial changing of our nickname and accompanying tourism campaign from Visit Philadelphia are among the many ways Philadelphia will mark this milestone, end quote. Another possible addition to the city could be a Kobe Bryant statue placed at the Philadelphia Art Museum steps. To honor the Philadelphia native Kobe Bryant, fans have suggested a statue next to the famous Rocky statue, and this idea was even supported by none other than Rocky himself. When asked about the idea, Sylvester Stallone said he absolutely supports this decision. Right now, there are no plans for this creation, but maybe we'll see two Philadelphia sports legends at the museum in the future. 
On Monday, February 3rd, local Delaware County School Interboro had their senior night game. This was not any ordinary game, though. Normally, Colin Jones, a senior with Down syndrome, acts as the team manager. But for this game, Colin was given the opportunity of a lifetime. For the first play of the game, Colin took to the court and scored the first basket of the game. As Colin scored the first basket for the team, the crowd erupted with cheers. Check out this video. Looks underneath here for Jones. Jones puts it up and it's go. Oh. He had no trouble on that one. Colin Jones, the senior, his first two points in his first ever game. He was wide open under there all by himself and just softly laid it in. Great video. The Reading Terminal Market will celebrate its 127th birthday on February 22nd with a Roaring Twenties theme. Along with the birthday celebration, the market will host its 10th annual Party for the Market, an after-hours fundraising event with plenty of food and entertainment. Guests who have purchased tickets in advance can look forward to 50 market merchants, open bars, live music, and giveaways for vacations. Nearly 2,000 guests are expected to attend. Tickets go on sale February 14th. On Thursday, January 13th, the Camden Adventure Aquarium welcomed two new African penguin chicks into the world. The female chick is named Betty, in honor of the African penguin's homeland, Betty's Bay, South Africa. To name the male chick, the Adventure Aquarium is running a naming contest on their social media pages. The options to vote on are Robin, Boulder, and Simon. People who vote by the contest deadline are also entered in a chance to win four tickets to the aquarium. In May of 2019, the aquarium ran a similar contest for several new African penguins. The winning names were Meatball and Pistachio. Voting for the new chicks' names is now closed, but looking for the winning name. All right, another naming competition. Who would you choose? Um, for the contest in 2019, I love Meatball. So I know, you were talking earlier one. about Meatball. I was Team Pistachio. You were Team Meatball. No, I like Meatballs better than Pistachio. I know, but I would choose Pistachio. <laughs> the, the current contest, or it's now close, but it was Robin, Boulder, Simon. What do you choose? Um, what name? Boulder, I think. That sounds Boulder? pretty cool for a male penguin. How about yeah. you? Boulder's pretty cool. Simon's also cool. Like, Simon. It's such like a, I don't know. Simon says. Simon sounds British. I don't know. <laughs> Simon says. Simon Cowell. Simon, I was, I was literally. That's why you said that. it sounds British. I was thinking of that. I was thinking of Simon Cowell. All right. <laughs> Coming up after this last break, a favorite '90s snack is making a return. We'll be right back. So okay. great. Hello? Don't be nervous. Are you the one who's been watching me? We've been watching this entire time. Who is this? You should already know who's watching you. What do you mean? It's us, LaSalle. LaSalle? LaSalle TV. Oh, we are watching LaSalle TV. Yo, bro, what's good? What's going on? How you feeling, man? I'm doing good. How you doing? When did you start smoking? Smoking? It's a jewel, bro. It's a jewel? Yeah. Listen, you might as well be smoking cigarettes. When you start jeweling or vaping, you're four times more likely to start smoking cigarettes. Is that true? That's very true. <laughs> Give me the jewel. You don't need it. To learn more about e-cigarettes, go to thetruth.com. The sun of fire and beauty. Destruction and life. Something so magnificent, you can't even look at it. My son of fire and passion. Life until death. Something so magnificent, you can't look away. Maybe because we don't look at the sun, we are afraid that we might not be able to let go of the beauty that just might end up 
destroying us. Welcome back. President Trump was acquitted last Wednesday by the Republican-controlled Senate of the charges of abuse of power and obstruction of Congress. Democrats fell far short of the two-thirds majority that was required to remove Trump from office, as senators voted 52 to 48 to acquit him on the abuse of power allegation and 53 to 47 to clear him of obstruction. Just one Republican Senator Mitt Romney of Utah voted to convict the president of abuse of power. The outcome represented a political triumph for the White House and Senate majority leader Mitch McConnell, who successfully blocked witnesses and additional evidence from the proceedings. Following the three-week impeachment trial, the fate of Donald Trump now lies in the hands of voters this November. The coronavirus continues to wreak havoc around the world. Worldwide casualty numbers are staggering. 910 people have died. More than 40,000 people have been sickened by the virus. On Sunday, February 9th, 97 people died in China alone marking the deadliest day since the virus first broke out last month. Containing the virus has proved difficult not only for China, but for many countries around the world. Recently, a Diamond Princess cruise ship was quarantined in Japanese waters after 135 confirmed cases of the virus were determined to be present on board. And now that number has actually unfortunately increased. Um, reports now say that 40 more confirmed cases on that cruise ship um, have been uh, discovered. That total now is 175 on that cruise ship, still being quarantined. Oh, no. Um, but in the general, it, with the coronavirus overall, the number of cases has leveled off, so there isn't yeah. as much of a spike as much. That's good. Um, so that's good, but still a serious global public health issue. It's very concerning. Um, it is concerning, and as serious as this this case is and this issue is, there has actually been increases in searches on Google for the beer virus and <laughs> the corona beer virus. Apparently, you know, meme culture just, you know, you know it just is crazy. People think I, the coronavirus and corona beers <laughs> are somehow related. They think that they catch coronavirus from drinking coronas. That's not the case. That's you can catch not, a hangover, but not the coronavirus. That's very true. So, I mean, two a totally a, different a health different issues. kind of coronavirus. <laughs> Alrighty, well, 90s babies rejoice. The vanilla cookie and icing combo known as Dunkaroos is returning to shelves in summer 2020. General Mills has just announced that this nostalgic cookie, which had an eight-year hiatus, is coming back. General Mills is keeping the original and unique logo, and Sydney, the beloved kangaroo, will remain as the Dunkaroos mascot. The second coming of Dunkaroos have been predicted by a snack history blog back in September 2018. Jamie Bastian, a Dunkaroos spokeswoman, says that fans have relentlessly begged for the return of Dunkaroos over the years. Even celebrities have posted about the snack, including Kim Kardashian, who claims to be obsessed with the snack. Dunkaroos will soon be available for sale in original vanilla and the vanilla rainbow sprinkles flavors. Mornings can be rough, but Wendy's is hoping to make them a little more enjoyable with their new breakfast menu. Launching nationwide on March 2nd, the fast food chain will be offering nine sandwiches, including the breakfast baconator and the honey butter chicken biscuit. To pair with the sandwich, customers will be able to add a side of Wendy's new potato wedges or a frosty, which is a combination of their signature shake and coffee. How did Wendy's break this news in the first place? By trolling McDonald's on Twitter, of course. And it started when they mentioned Mickey D's in a tweet asking to be roasted. The Wendy's official Twitter account then followed up with a quote, yeah, we wouldn't wake up for your breakfast either. Don't worry, on March 2nd, there will be something worth waking up for, end quote. Who doesn't love a good Twitter battle? Well, Mr. Peanut is alive after all. A little over a week after planters announced the death of their longtime mascot, representatives from a number of other brands gathered for his funeral for an ad ran during the Super Bowl. Thanks to a tear from the Kool-Aid man landing on his grave, Mr. Peanut sprouted again like a phoenix from the ashes. Reaction to Baby Peanut on the internet was immediately positive, some even comparing it to another adorable pop culture phenomenon, Baby Yoda. Mr. Peanut, who has been Planter's mascot for 104 years, appears to be going nowhere anytime soon. A lot to process there. We have the rebirth of Mr. Peanut, 
like a phoenix rising from the ashes. We have Dunkaroos. We have Wendy's and McDonald's. <laughs> what to talk about? I don't even know. You're a 90s baby, right? Uh, barely. Are 98. You? So oh. You're a fan of Dunkaroos, though? Who's not a fan of Dunkaroos? You know, last night in B&G, they had a 90s night. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure they had Dunkaroos. Yeah. Or they attempted to have Dunkaroos. They also had Dino Nuggets, which I was very happy about. I, they were serving them on the white tray. Yeah. yeah. I was having, like, a lot of... School cafeteria school, flashbacks. I was, like, I was, like, in the line. I'm, like, where am I? Is this high school all over again? <laughs> all right. Well, our show is not over yet because we have <laughs> hashtag what's trending. If you were planning on entering Philly's Chewbacca Roar Contest, then you made a Wookiee mistake. Flyers encouraging people to enter a contest to give their best impression of Chewbacca were posted around Philadelphia and New Jersey as a prank. And the culprit? A 14-year-old high school student who wanted to play a joke on his friend. Noel Hecht of Haddon Township High School printed 50 of about... 50 flyers of about the fake contest with his friend's phone number listed, offering a $50 prize for the best impression. Hecht expected his friend to get about 20 calls, but to his surprise, more than 500 calls were made. Despite the excessive calls, Hecht's friend still found the joke to be funny and occasionally still receives entries for the contest. So, <coughs> Nick. I heard that you actually have a Chewbacca impression of oh, your yeah. own. Oh, yeah. Let me, let me pull it up, you know? Wait, let's see. Is it going to play? Oh. oh, my goodness. It was working before. You have to, oh, this you have is, to do this it is yourself. It's going to play eventually. You have to do it yourself. I sound like I'm like a dying animal. But it's not even playing. This is really annoying. You love Star Wars. I do love Star Wars. doesn't mean that I do a good Chewbacca. It's a skill. I think it's a special it, skill. I think it's a skill that you have, though. I'll work on it. Maybe next show. Maybe. Who oh, knows? All right. All right. Well, well as I go work on my Chewbacca impression, that just about does it for this episode. But be sure to find us on the web as well as the rest of LaSalle TV on our Facebook page. We love to hear your thoughts, so tweet at us using our Twitter handle and start the conversation. If you missed the scoop and want to see it, you can find episodes on our YouTube on our LaSalle TV Philly page. Until next time, for Aaron Holly, Sam Long, and the entire crew, I'm Nick Paleo. Thanks for watching LTV News, where the action never stops.